Hey guys, welcome back to Med School Moose. This is going to be USMLE Step 1 Antibiotics for Linazolid. Same outline as all the other videos. We're going to talk about the classification first, then the mechanism of action, the uses for this medication, the side effects, and as in this case, we're going to talk about the resistance. So, starting off with the classification, linazolid is classified as an oxazolidinone. Big word, not very high yield for USMLE or for Comlex, but the reason that it's named this is because it contains a nitrogen and oxygen in a five-membered ring, as you can see right here. So this is where it gets its classification. There are other examples of uh, other oxazolidinones, such as posazolid, tedazolid, most of them obviously ending with zolid. Uh, there is also cycloserine, not very high yield for USMLE or Comlex, probably not even really going to see these in clinical practice, but there are other medications out there. In terms of the mechanism, the, the main area that linazolid is going to act is going to be on bacterial protein synthesis. Now, as you may recall from back in college uh, microbiology, there's three steps of protein synthesis. There's the initiation, the elongation, and the termination. Linazolid is going to act to, pl to block initiation of protein production. It inhibits that first step, so bacteria can't uh, produce the proteins necessary for their survival. Getting a little bit more into the mechanism, this is how it does it. If you may recall, that initiation complex consists of the messenger RNA, the transfer RNA, and then uh, all of that bind it together in the ribosomal RNA or the ribosomal subunits. The area that linazolid is going to act is going to be the 23S rRNA of the 50S large ribosomal subunit. The linazolid is going to bind there to that 23S portion, and it's going to prevent the formation of the initiation complex. So normally, without any antibiotic, the messenger RNA is going to bind the transfer RNA within the ribosome, and it's going to start the initiation complex and start protein synthesis. In this case, the linazolid is going to bind to that subunit. The messenger RNA and the transfer RNA cannot bind. They're going to dissociate. There's going to be no initiation complex and no translation of proteins. So that's the mechanism of how it uh, blocks protein production. In terms of the uses of linazolid, this is one of those more big gun antibiotics, thus the picture of Rambo here. It's primarily going to be used for gram-positive organisms, and some of the areas that we see linazolid being used is for pneumonia, for skin infections, for osteomyelitis, some of those more serious infections where other antibiotics just quite aren't going to cut it. Some of the big areas where linazolid is used is for that MRSA, that methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus, as well as for VRE, vancomycin-resistant enterococcus. So these are very multi-drug uh, multi resistant organisms, and you're going to need stronger antibiotics like linazolid. It's typically given IV, but one important thing to note is that the oral bioavailability of linazolid is almost near 100%, so it's actually pretty good oral as well. In addition to that, the concentration of linazolid in the lower respiratory tract may actually be higher than in the blood, which is one of the reasons that people believe it may be very good for pneumonia. Finally, just one thing that I wanted to mention to really drive this point home is that the World Health Organization classifies linazolid as a, quote, critically important for human medicine, unquote. That is why it is such an important drug. It's really used that last line of defense for those multi-drug resistant organisms. So when you're seeing that on the exam or you're seeing that in the hospital, just know it's for a very serious infection. In terms of the side effects of linazolid, they can actually be either not that bad or with chronic use, they can be pretty bad. So it's usually well tolerated. Some of the side effects that you're going to see from short-term use are headache, nausea, diarrhea, rash, but if you begin to use it longer term, you may see some more serious side effects like bone marrow suppression, thrombocytopenia, peripheral neuropathy, particularly the optic nerve can be damaged uh, with longer use, as well as serotonin syndrome. So it could either be not too bad or pretty bad. Finally, in terms of the resistance, resistance to linazolid is actually pretty low for now, fortunately. That's why it's one of those big gun antibiotics. But there are some bacteria that can create point mutations in the 23S ribosomal RNA, so that the linazolid cannot bind. And this is actually being seen in some uh, strains of Enterococcus as well as Staph aureus. So who knows, maybe in a couple of years, there will be a lot more bacteria out there that are uh, resistant to linazolid, which is really unfortunate and scary. But for now, that is all the high yield information for this video. Thank you so much for watching. As always, please like, comment, and subscribe, and good luck studying.